Facebook has been very good to me in, in many ways. It allows me to interact with the public, uh, answer questions, and uh, get asked questions. Well, here's an interesting one. Uh, one of my Facebook friends sent me this picture asking if I knew what this was. Well, it looked interesting. It was sort of an ornate picture, uh, Victorian uh, era looking. But what really intrigued me was this container that was suspended above the, uh, the flame. And uh, that triggered a memory in my mind. I mean, offhand, I didn't know what this lamp was, uh, but quickly revealed. I mean, obviously, these days with Google, you can do a quick search. And it turned out to be a vapocresoline lamp that was a therapeutic device. Now, that triggered uh, an idea for me because uh, when I was uh, a child, I had childhood asthma. And uh, back then, in those uh, pre-rescue inhaler days, there was a treatment. And uh, we would have a metal cup, put a powder in it, put a flame under it, and I would inhale the fumes. And that kind of reminded me uh, you know, of this lamp, or vice versa. The lamp reminded me of, of, of that. And of course, back then I was way too young to, to think about what I may have been inhaling. But I did a search now and I kind of uh, uh, found the answer to this mystery. Well, first of all, this lamp that I just showed you, the vapor crystalline lamp, uh, was supposed to heat up a, a mixture of compounds called cresols. And these had been made famous by Joseph Lister uh, as antiseptics. And back in uh, the 1800s, uh, germs, of course, uh, were a focus. Louis Pasteur had introduced the idea of the germ theory of disease, and everyone wanted to kill germs. And Lister, a surgeon, had introduced uh, carbolic acid and various cresols to kill these germs. And you would put those, you would put the cresol into this container, heat it up, and, and inhale it. Now, I knew that I wasn't inhaling any, any cresols when I was uh, undergoing this treatment because cresols don't work for asthma. Asthma is not, not a bacterial disease. So I thought about what this may have been, and um, I, I think I know. It was a powder that was uh, basically the ground-up leaves of the belladonna plant because back then, um, from the 1800s on till about the, the 1950s, there were various products uh, that were targeted for asthma that were based on inhaling uh, fumes of belladonna or taking various kinds of belladonna preparations. That contains atropine, and atropine really does help uh, breathing. We know that it interferes with acetylcholine uh, receptors in, in the body. So now when I think back, I'm pretty sure that what I was inhaling was uh, belladonna and atropine, and it really did help. Luckily, I outgrew the childhood asthma. But quite recently, belladonna has been in the news again uh, because the FDA in the US has warned uh, parents not to use any homeopathic teething medications that were made with belladonna uh, because there had been reports of some uh, baby suffering seizures. How can this be from a homeopathic remedy, which supposedly contains nothing? I think it was just improper dilution and uh, some homeopathic manufacturers just don't know how to dilute their products properly. So anyway, that's an interesting story from the lamp that uh, someone asked me about to my childhood asthma and to a recent warning about a homeopathic remedy.